thank you, Robert, for such a lovely introduction, Angela, and, and um, everyone from the council, the Center for Arms Control and Proliferation for the award. It means a lot to me. Um, and thank you for bringing up the, the coverage of the secret U.S.-Iran diplomacy um, the past couple of years. It's the most exciting part of the, of the Iran nuclear story that I've gotten to uncover. Um, there are conflicting signals from Iran as we wait to see if they'll be able to reach the final deal later this month or perhaps a little bit beyond as, uh, as, as some of our participants here made me think it might take a little bit longer. Um, but a couple observations from covering the nuclear diplomacy um, that inform my, my, my overall optimism about the deal. Um, it is worth noting that uh, Iran's supreme leader, uh, despite his oft-expressed skepticism about engaging with the United States and whether the, uh, the U.S. can be trusted in a deal, that he authorized the secret talks with the United States on the nuclear issue um, back before Hassan Rouhani came into office. Um, um, going back to 2012 and 2013, we now know there were secret U.S.-Iran talks um, in Oman um, that he authorized because, in essence, Iran felt like it wasn't able to uh, uh, advance its interests in the negotiations with the P5 plus one uh, when they were being led on the Iran side by a hardliner, Saeed Jalili. So Khamenei authorized the secret talks with the U.S., and in March 2013, then Deputy Secretary of State Bill Burns led a U.S. team to Oman to meet with Iranian officials. And for the first time at that meeting, um, Burns conveyed a letter um, from President Obama to Khamenei that said Obama would be prepared to accept a limited uh, enrichment program in Iran as part of an overall acceptable uh, Iran nuclear deal. Now, the talks, uh, the secret talks in Oman, actually, there were supposed to be another one before the Iranian presidential elections, and they, they didn't take place. But three months later, Hassan Rouhani, <clears throat> the moderate former Iranian nuclear negotiator who had campaigned on a platform of engagement with the West, uh, won the Iran elections and, more notably, was allowed to win the elections. Um, then the secret U.S.-Iran diplomacy went into high gear and helped make way <clears throat> for the reaching of the interim Iran nuclear deal in November 2013. That deal has held for the past 18 months as negotiators have, uh, have negotiated through two extensions to try to complete the final deal that they're now seeking to complete by the end of this month. Meantime, the, the one secret U.S.-Iran diplomatic channel has come out of the shadows. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has met Iran's Foreign Minister Javad Zarif one-on-one -on -one more than with any other foreign counterpart. And at the deputy level, these meetings are, have become, gone from being taboo to commonplace and are resuming again in Vienna this week. While the nuclear issue has been quite compartmentalized, we know that more recently, Kerry and Zarif have also discussed um, Iraq, where both the U.S. and Iran are trying to support the Baghdad government's fight against ISIS, as well as Yemen. So the tectonic plates have shifted a bit despite considerable mistrust and hostility between the two countries. Um, Iran's President Rouhani, when he was in New York this past fall for U.N. meetings, recounted his historic phone call with President Obama the year before. He said Obama has said, if we reach a nuclear deal, maybe we could talk about cooperating in other areas. And Rouhani said, he replied, using a Persian expression that translates roughly to, let's raise the baby we already have, if we're talking about having a second one. In other words, let's get the nuclear deal first and then see what else, uh, what other cooperation might be possible. So let's all wish the negotiators good luck in their important work to conclude the deal. And thank you again. And I also want to thank uh, uh, my editor, the managing editor of Our Monitor, Michelle Upton, who's with us tonight, as well as my parents, Jay and Sandy Rosen, who came from Kansas City to join us, um, and my, especially my husband, Mike, and daughters, Zoe and Abby, who have uh, held down the fort and been very patient as I've covered many weeks of negotiations. Uh, abroad for the past four years.